What's up everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to give you my tips to winterize your motorcycle for the upcoming cold months. Since the temperatures are dropping, let's not waste any time and get right to it. Hey everybody, Mike Bird back with you. And like I told in the intro, I'm gonna talk about winterizing your bike. I've been living here in DC for roughly 15 years and riding for the last 10. Uh, going through these DC winters and snow, I've learned a few tips and a few tricks that uh, has helped winterize my bike. So that way when I get on that bike, uh, in the spring, it's ready to go. I don't have to do anything to it. I just have to crank it up and go. If you find this video helpful, if you find something that you really, really do like about it, please do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, uh, hit that like button. The other thing I would like you to do is in the comments section, let us all know what you do in your region or if you have any tips or tricks that I didn't mention that will help other people kind of winterize their bike. So without further ado, let's jump into that first step. So the first step is going to be fluid changes, and I'm talking mainly about your oil, your transmission fluid, and your primary crankcase. The reason for that is, is those fluids build up particulates and all kinds of contaminants over the course of just normal wear and tear and riding your bike. So you want to change those fluids out and have fresh fluids circulating in your bike. Having the bike sit up for three to four months in cold temperatures, never a good thing to have old fluid in there. So be sure to change your fluids, all three of them, uh, and also change that oil filter as well. That's an obvious thing, but a lot of people tend to change their oil and leave the filter on until like their second or third oil change. For the winterization process, you definitely want to change all of those out, including your oil filter. Next up is something that's kind of debatable. I'm talking mainly about spark plugs. So with spark plugs, some people don't change them as often as they should, but, but the way I ride my bike with uh, competitions and training in parking lots doing cone patterns, I ride my bike fairly hard and it gets a lot of use during the summer and warmer months. So I tend to change those spark plugs. The other reason I change them is it's pretty cheap insurance and maintenance on the bike. You can get uh, your spark plugs even at a Harley dealership for roughly $12 to $15 for the set of two. Uh, it's pretty cheap uh, maintenance on the bike, I think. It's well worth it. Uh, at the very least, if you don't change your spark plugs, what I highly recommend is at least pulling those plugs out and looking at the working end of those spark plugs and make sure they're in good condition. If they are, rock on. Go ahead and put them back in your bike and you're good to go. Otherwise, if you don't mind sporting you know, the $12, $13, $14 bucks to get your uh, spark plugs change I think it's cheap insurance and well worth the money so now we come to your fuel and stabilizer this is a pretty critical step so be sure not to skip this one as I said before everything is laid out in a sequential form so as you kind of go through this list that I'm giving you everything's kind of fall into place and, and, and has a reason and a rhyme to it. So essentially with your fuel, uh, you have fresh fluids in your cavities, you have you know brand new spark plugs if you chose to put those in. Uh, now, uh, one of the good things about this winterization process is you get to ride your bike to you know your closest gas station. It's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna get all that fresh oil and transmission fluid through all those cavities. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill up your tank with stabilizer. Uh, as you get to the gas station, you're going to have a pre-measured uh, amount of your stabilizer. And the reason for that is, is because it's going to be based on how many gallons you're going to put in your tank. Mine is a six gallon tank, so I measure to that. Uh, you're going to put your stabilizer in first, and then you're going to fill your tank up. When I say fill your tank up, I mean absolutely as far to the top as you can get it. One of the ways I do that is I'll keep the bike upright and I'll kind of rock it back and forth, you know, to the left and the right as I'm filling up and get that fuel level as high up to uh, of the tank as possible. The key here is you want as little air in your tank as possible. That air is going to get uh, a good way to condensation. Condensation is water, and water in your tank is obviously never good. Uh, as far as your stabilizer, uh, everybody you know knows obviously that fuel is now ethanol based. And uh, ethanol is great, but if it sits up for any length of time, that fuel is going to separate chemically and you're gonna wind up with uh, parts of the gasoline that's gonna sit in the bottom of your tank because it's heavier than the actual gasoline itself. And that stabilizer keeps that from happening because 
obviously what's at the bottom of your tank. You have your fuel lines, you have your fuel filter and other components, and that's what's gonna cause you clogged lines and a bad filter. And when you go to crank up your bike, it's not gonna crank, or worse yet, it's going to die on you when you actually are on the road or you need to crank it from you know one of the uh, stops that you've made uh, while you're on your ride. So that's why stabilization uh, of your fuel is, is super, super important. So don't skip on that, uh, and again, uh, when you're riding your, your bike back home, uh, you're going to get all that treated fuel into your lines and into your filter, which is key because if you didn't do that, uh, those are going to be holding fuel. And once you put your stabilizer in and you didn't run your bike, it's not going to circulate into, into those areas. And that fuel is not going to be treated. And that's where you're going to get your fuel separation problems. Another thing to remember too is that separation, once it happens, it's not reversible. So there's not like an additive you can put in there that I'm aware of um, that is going to remix that fuel and make it uh, regular fuel again, that's going to be a pretty expensive uh, bill when you have to have your tank flushed, your lines flushed, and a new filter installed, maybe even a new fuel pump depending on how bad it is. So spend the money, go out, you know, six, 10, 15 bucks on uh, some stabilizer, put that in your tank before you fill it up, uh, let it run through your system when you uh, ride it home, and then you're going to be good to go as far as your fuel is concerned. So folks, the next step is going to be to wash and treat your bike. When I say wash your bike, you want to do it as thoroughly as possible. You want to get all the road grime, all of the you know salt if you've been driving it recently, uh, if you want to get all the bug guts off, because all that stuff is going to wind up you know, really, really difficult to get off if your bike sits up and you don't clean it. It's just much more difficult to get uh, get off your bike. So I usually take the saddlebags off. Uh, if you do have a detachable windshield, take that off. Any of the bigger components that are detachable, take those off and get clean water as much of the bike as possible. Uh, you wanna definitely get under the undercarriage as well because obviously that's gonna get a lot of road grime and, and salt again. If you've been riding it recently and you have salt on the roads, you wanna rinse all that off and then you put all that stuff back together and then you're gonna to wanna to either dry it with a chamois cloth or a blower. But the point being is you want it as clean and as dry as possible. The dry part, you don't want any water spots as it sits up for the winter. The other thing I would highly recommend you do is to put a good UV protectant on there. I use the standard Harley spray bottle stuff, but anything's gonna work. And the point is uh, on that is you definitely wanna uh, put that layer of protection uh, on your painted surfaces, your tank, uh, even your windshield, uh, you want the your fairing, saddlebags, tour pack, all that stuff. Put a good UV protectant on there, and that's going to protect you in the long run against that that really harsh, glaring sun uh, during those winter months. So next up is going to be a fairly obvious one, and that's your battery. If you're going to winterize your bike, definitely need to put uh, your battery onto a tender. A couple of ways to do this with Harley's. They have that really convenient pigtail that kind of comes in uh, like right under the seat or somewhere along uh, the side panels. So pretty easy to connect. Uh, sometimes you may need to actually remove the battery and put it on a tender that way. Either way though, make sure that you put your battery on a tender. That cold weather, the temperatures uh, is gonna wreak havoc with your battery charge. You're gonna wind up you know, wanting to take it for a quick spin on a warm day, or as you're getting ready to ride it for the spring, all you're gonna get is that you know famous click, click, click. So you definitely want to put your battery onto a tender. A couple little, uh, one little side note, I just recently upgraded my uh, battery to a lithium ion. Super happy with it, a lot of cold cranking amps. Uh, one of the better upgrades that uh, I've done to the bike. But that specific battery requires a specific tender that is uh, rated to charge lithium ion batteries. So if you're using a lead acid, you're good to go. Just make sure it's a lead acid tender. If you're going to be having uh, an upgrade to an, a lithium ion battery like I did, make sure that your battery tender is rated for lithium ion. In the description, I put a link below to a battery tender that is a dual purpose one. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive, so take a look at that one. That's not one you might want to consider. But either way, no matter what battery you have, make sure that your tender matches up to that battery. Next to the last thing is going to be your tires. Tires is something uh, in the winterization process that sometimes gets neglected until you actually take the bike uh, out for the spring and you wind up with this rumble or a lot of vibration uh, in your ride. But what happens is if your bike sits up for any length of time, those tires 
are going to build up a, uh, a, a flat spot if you don't move or rotate those tires. I have a little saying that I use, elevate or rotate. I'm fortunate enough to have a bike lift. So what I do is once all of those steps are done uh, that I've talked about previously, what I'll do is I will take the bike, I will put it on the lift, and I will lift the bike just where the tires clear the asphalt or the concrete, depending on where I've, I'm putting it. And then I'll strap the bike down with some toe straps to secure it, and then I'm good to go on the tires. So I've elevated those tires so that the way there's no flat spots because I'm gonna be storing it for anywhere from three to four months. If you don't have a lift, not a problem. Just rotate your tires about every three weeks or so, uh, roughly four to six inches. You can even put a chalk mark on the on the uh, tires to make sure that you're rotating them enough to get off of uh, the, the part of the tread that was sitting on the concrete uh, previously. So don't neglect your tires, super, super important because the last thing you wanna do is take it out for a spin uh, in the spring and wind up with a, a, a rattle that just you're not going to wind up uh, being able to, to remedy and you're gonna wind up putting brand new tires, which as we all know is not uh, an inexpensive task. So do not neglect your tires. And finally folks, a good cover. Uh, if you're gonna be storing your bike in a garage or some type of climatized uh, storage facility, kind of an optional sort of thing, I would recommend Ford just because you can get a lot of dust accumulation anyway and it'll keep the bike clean. But if you're definitely gonna be storing your bike outside, cover for me is a non-negotiable. I would absolutely cover the bike. It's gonna protect against the UV from the sun, it's gonna protect against the snow, the grime, the rain, the dirt, and all that other kind of stuff. And you don't wanna come out to a bike in the spring and have it filthy and dirty and your paint's gonna be faded your your seats are going to be uh, you know all kind of torn up potentially so you just want to make sure the bike is protected two things about the uh, cover I would recommend make sure that it has a drawstring on the bottom to cinch the, the the cover to the bike or some type of buckle system that is going to again attach that cover to the bike wind can get pretty bad during the winter time and you don't want to have to chase that cover down the road or wind up coming out one morning and you see your bikes exposed because the cover blew off one more thing on the cover I would say make sure that it encompasses and cinches down over your pipe because critters do love to nest during the winter time and so you don't want to wind up getting in your on your bike cranking it up and you're gonna you know launch a chipmunk that decided to you know make a home out of your your muffler so I would say make sure that your your pipes are very well protected if you have pipes that won't uh, cinch down around the cover uh, I would recommend taking like a, a shopping bag or something like that and just taking a rubber band and making sure that they're they're sealed off and covered because you definitely want to keep you know any wild life out of your mufflers. As promised folks, pretty short, pretty sweet, but I think uh, pretty critical if you're gonna put your bike up for the winter. Uh, hopefully everybody got something out of it. If you did, again, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, let me know. Leave some comments in the comments section about what you have done, some things that you know kind of have worked well for you, whatever region you work, uh, based on your type of bike, that type of thing. Everybody's here to learn. I'm hoping that uh, everybody got something out of this video, uh, but leave uh, some things in the description uh, in the comment section uh, that you know you feel worked for you and your bike until next time keep the rubber side down